Hi, everybody. I'm Aaron with Elevate, the, the president and CEO, if we've not met before. And we've been doing these community updates and sharing with our friends on social, our partners and advocates and donors, all the different people that engage with Elevate, support uh, the kids in the city that we work with. Um, just to give you an insight as to kind of how we do what we do and what it looks like in this season, the season ahead, I have a special guest uh, today to be able to share with you a really unique collaborator, um, somebody we've been partnering with here this last year, and I thought we could just give a glimpse into some of her work with Elevate behind the scenes. Uh, but first, kind of share your name and your title and organization, and, and uh, we'll kind of go off from there. Yeah, so thank you for today. Hello, my name is Dr. Courtney Bird. I am a research scientist and consultant at Brooks Bird & Company, and it's been an honor and privilege to work alongside Elevate um, to do some community-based research. Um, so yeah, thank you for today. So you started to mention the community-based research, but just in general, um, for maybe just a, a short kind of snippet of your background, was so what? What do you do? I know it's consultancy, you know, for you. But but what does that what does that look like, or what is your aim and part of your mission in general? For it kind of got to this point of being Doctor Bird and kind of your heart your heart for the city and community as it is. Yeah, thank you. That's a great question. So, over the past twelve years, I've studied in public health and learning the discipline of how to do research, in particular policy research. And um, my interests have been centered around three buckets, um, social policy, boys and men's health, and community violence prevention. Mm. And so, honestly, just my heart and passion to work with uh, you know, some under-resourced backgrounds um, have really uh, driven a lot of my work, if you will. And so, um, I'm a native of Atlanta. Uh, I moved here to go to IU, the School of Public Health. Mm. And, um, yeah, just completed my doctorate a year in, and um, thank you. <laughs> and since I've been in the state of Indiana, I had a chance to conduct over 100 interviews uh, in Monroe County, Lake County, as well as Marion County. And so I think one of the biggest things I've learned as a qualitative researcher is just practicing the craft of research. Um, how do you do it? By just doing it over and over again with diff different community partners. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. So one of the reasons why I wanted to have this conversation with Dr. Bird and just share a little bit of the glimpse of the project that she's taken on with Elevate the last year and will continue on as well is that often for our partners and owners, you see videos and picture updates and meet staff and they see the front end of that, right? Yeah. They see graduation rates and you know the number of students that we're serving. And people often don't understand the level just behind the scenes work, what it takes right. to support you know, all what we call long-term life-changing work and the metrics and impact that we take pride in that we're always aiming at to achieving, you know, in all seasons. And this was a quote-unquote unique project, but it was kind of true as you even to describe your three buckets. I thought, yep, yeah, but that's why we ended up talking and we, we share a lot of the same heart, yeah. you know, for those things in organization. But maybe describe a little bit kind of what your work recently was, like what started this, what was this first project, yeah. and then what's going to continue on and yeah. whatever shape and form that it yeah. does. But what, what was that? Yeah, great uh, question. So this project was able to um, gather and listen to the voices of students and teacher mentors to understand their perception of, of the Elevate program I and mean, what the true impact that Elevate is having on um, students from grades 8 through 12 as well as alumni and so being able to hear their voices in real time them speak to um, how Elevate is helping them prepare for college and career readiness um, and what are they doing, how Elevate makes them feel in the classroom and um, helping them find their identity or uh, learn how to thrive in their environment or to succeed in their um, courses. So honestly, this project, um, we interviewed students, uh, current Elevate students as well as alumni. Um, as well as teacher mentors. And so hearing um, ways that I think Elevate is doing well, um, uh, pardon me, regarding college and career readiness, as well as um, why students want Elevate in the classroom, why it's necessary for Elevate to continue to be um, a partner at the table, if you will. And so uh, simple things such as the, the findings from the data was able to speak to um, students know that they can walk into an Elevate classroom um, and feel seen, heard, and loved. Um, they, whether they're going to the classroom for a snack um, or just to get a good morning. One student mentioned how just 
every day they know that they can they'll be seen in that classroom being able to say a simple hello and so I think just hearing the narratives from the students and with the things that they were able to identify was very powerful and just for me as that research scientist external to your organization just lets me know that Elevate is not just talking the talk but you're actually walking it out and you're fulfilling your mission um, and meeting the needs of your students in this community. So obviously took a lot of interviews and <laughs> yeah. it was an extensive project, yeah. you know, small yeah. compared to bigger ones, but it was still pretty extensive, yeah. you know, for, for us anyway. Did, did you observe any concerns just in general about youth in the city it may not be per se related to Elevate as an organization mm -hmm. as much as, but you observe a lot as yeah. a third party observer yeah. and somebody that was outsider coming in mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. That unpacked a lot. What what set out to you as concerns that our city should be concerned about that, that maybe we've talked about or not? What came yeah. to mind? Yeah. Once uh, some of the concerns that students were able to identify was uh, the fear of not being able to afford college, um, because in the current circumstances, uh, based on where they're living or how they're living, um, college just seems so far away. Like, hey, I can't afford it, or am I good enough to go, or um, do I have the grades to go, or um, so uh, naming um, uh, the financial aspect of schools uh, just seemed very intimidating to students. They named it like, can I even afford to go to Scott College? Well, so with that being said, some of them just chose not to think about college, whereas some students said, well, hey. Being in Elevate has exposed me that there are resources available for them to go to college, and so they, the college visits or the tours, and so I'm trying to give you both perspectives. Yeah, I've heard from different good. students that um, the way they framed it, um, them maybe uh, not having individuals in their family who've gone to school, so just knowing that they can uh, uh, be exposed to different uh, events, if you will. So some other things we heard about. Um, Elevate students discuss this idea of um, being taught something, um, information within Elevate, but then how other teachers are not reinforcing it. And so it's like, you know, the dress code, for example, like um, students mentioned how they can come to school in these days looking any kind of way, but then they're taught to go to these job interviews and be suited and booted, if you will, and how you know, just um, how some, in some aspects, what schools are allowing is not aligning up with community or yeah, what's yeah, needed to level up. exactly. So yeah. um, it's just P very pajamas and Crocs <laughs> and yeah, t-shirts and yeah, that, yeah that work at the workplace. Yeah, we can't, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I have teenagers. I live it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. No, that's 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 good. So one thing I think about communities: is there anything that I mean, all that's certainly relevant. Is there anything that you heard or that you see in other work, you heard in your interviews here as we kind of continue this process along? Mm -hmm. What should community members, whether business owners, or whether in government or nonprofit or business or whatnot, what is, what's, is there a takeaway that, yeah. that, hey, that they can tap in this way? They can, yeah. they can be an advocate in this way okay. that helps. Anything come to mind? Yes, absolutely. So students have an interest. They want to see more business owners come to the schools to get presentations. Mm -hmm. That was a deep uh, uh, need they expressed um, for career day or just coming to, to show them that it is possible, that they can um, become that entrepreneur, become that researcher or teacher. I think having more uh, business owners um, uh, come uh, to uh, schools such as the George Washington High School to show students like it is possible for you to come from a certain neighborhood or geographic location and um, become successful. Um, I think students are interested in discovering um, different opportunities outside of the post-secondary route. Like what does it look like to go to a trade school or um, so it was just a, a variety of interests that students expressed like wanting to hear more from the entrepreneurs. Um, so they're definitely uh, interested, and so I think having, uh, to your point, uh, our neighbors within this community to say, hey, students are hungry, they want to see and hear from you all, so please come alongside to share, you know, um, you say, each one teach one, and so being able to give back and share your voice and say, hey, I, I was just like you maybe 10 years ago in school. Um, students are still, uh, particularly in this age, as they share, um, discovering their identity, discovering what 
they want to do um, as it relates to college um, and career uh, workforce. And so I think uh, ultimately to bring it home, um, there was an interest from students in Elevate, both current and alums, just wanting to hear more, learn more um, about what's available within their community, seeing people, hearing from people who look like them, as well as people who may not look like them, but um, live in the same community as they do. And so I think overall, just knowing that we all have a part to play um, in raising the next generation uh, of students. That's good, Dr. Bird. Last question. Our organizational theme this year. So every year we look to set a theme and kind of roll out how it kind of helps drive what we do, how we need to grow as an organization. This year we set the theme, uh, elevating their community, elevating our city. Mm -hmm. And so this idea that we we to elevate their community, so our students, their community is in our mission. Yeah. We want our students to thrive, contribute, elevate their community, but, but then ultimately their community is elevated, which is our neighborhood or our city is a collection of neighborhoods, right? right. So when you hear that theme, you think about that, knowing, knowing the way you do our students, many of our students in our organization, mm -hmm. anything come to mind? Yeah. What, what comes to mind? How does that stand out to, to you? Hmm. Wow. That's a really great question. Elevating our community. Um, yeah. Any overlap in your research buckets or just as you see the city the way you do, you've had some pretty you know, recent roles and shift, you get to see have a pretty wide landscape and view of the city, anything would that come to mind in that space? Yeah, I think the top of mind, um, as we freely receive, so freely give, mm -hmm. and to truly give back, um, sometimes uh, in doing research or uh, working in a program, you think, oh, I'm here to help them, but we but if we can reframe that, they're also helping us. And so when we begin to change our thinking to say that none of us can truly get there alone, right? Um, something that Elevate believes in and models, like even as adults, like we, we can learn from our youth. And, um, and I mentioned next generation, particularly next generation of leaders. If we want to uh, contribute to our society and, and the progress, like it starts now using what we have and being um, having impactful, meaning, meaningful relationships. And so, I don't know, I think to just bring it home, if you will, um, let's stop focusing on um, things that we don't have in common and look for the things we do. And we can all remember being young, mm -hmm. wanting to be loved, mm -hmm. seen, and heard. And even as adults, we still need that. And so, um, yeah, it's just like, how can we continue to work together, learn from one another, no matter what age um, people may be? So yeah, I think that's... It's pretty good. Yeah. That'll, that, we'll, land, <laughs> we'll land on that. So thank you, uh, thank Dr. You. Dr. for your work with us thank and Elevate you. and all the ways you're elevating yeah. us yeah. and our students and our city. And thank you. thanks to our community partners and donors for listening in and getting just a glimpse behind the curtain as to one of the ways we're trying to build a strong organization for the year ahead. So thank you. Thank you.